If you like what you're hearing, why not try a StephCast subscription? Only four ninety five a month if you buy a year in advance. Go to stephaniemiller.com to find out how. And now, there's a fabulous new book by that very author, Naomi Wolf. Give me liber- liberty, a handbook for American revolutionaries. Here Yay! she is on the Celebrity Hotline. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, Naomi. Stephanie, I just love talking to you every single time. I absolutely love it. We're not even related, and you always give me such a boost. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, you do. You too, me. So I, th- this book does not come a moment too se- soon, in my opinion. Uh, tell me, Tell us about Give Me Liberty. Sure. Um, well, many many of your listeners probably know that uh, I wrote a book last year, and this is the sequel to it. The, the book I wrote last year, the end, the end of, America. of America. Yes, yep. and and that argued that we're seeing the ten classic steps that would be dictators always put in place when they are seeking to close down a democracy, to crush a democracy, and, and establish essentially a police state. Um, so that's you know a pretty scary message. And unfortunately, you know as you know, events have outpaced even my worst. Pre- so this is a yep. sequel, and if that one was the problem, this is the solution. I got to tell you, I, first of all, it's Naomi Week on the Stephanie Miller Show. We've had we had Naomi Klein on in Shock Doctrine. Very timely, also but, very timely. I mean, but, you know, our books really kind of um, bookend each other in yep. a way. Uh, because she's absolutely right, and so am I. <laughs> well, it's, uh, Naomi, the Naomi's got all the brain cells, cl- clearly. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it really is. It really is stunning, particularly in, in this economic crisis we find ourselves yeah. in the middle of, isn't it? Sometimes it's bad to be so right. I mean, uh, you know, the step steps nine and ten are. Uh, you know, the journalists start to get arrested. You start seeing mass arrests. You saw those this spring journalists who were arrested at the RNC. And then what you see in step 10 is the subversion of the rule of law. And all over the globe and, you know, throughout the 20th century, would be dictators have uh, created economic instability or, or made the most of existing economic instability to declare a crisis in those words right. and to nationalize, to make a power grab, to nationalize, to take over quote-unquote toxic assets to nationalize a huge chunk of the economy. Right. So, you know, I was so, as someone who studies history, I was horribly chilled with familiarity in looking at those 32 words that luckily, finally, the Democrats and Republicans are resisting. You know, this will have no oversight. Uh, Congress can't say anything about it. Uh, the judiciary can't say anything about it. Um, this is right. right it's out the of, whole uh, make yeah. people scared enough, and I guess you can, you can get anything by them, right? Exactly. And, and how um, much more power this power mad executive will have if he can get away with, uh, you know, seizing control of a giant chunk of the economy. I mean, he's basically able to hold the economy hostage um, had the, had this gone through the way he had proposed. Well, yeah, and that's the stunning part, right? It's like something that was caused by having no oversight. Now they want to fix by having no oversight, right? Right, exactly right. You're exactly right. But so what all of this is, and I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I'm, I'm really walking around this morning very, very uh, kind of depressed and, and sort of counting on, on people to kind of rise up in you know, with the step that I give them and give me liberty because, unfortunately, way into step 10 is that the executive starts to deploy the military into the streets. And I don't know if you've heard, but uh, a, a U.S. battalion in Iraq is being called home and will be deployed against, you know, illegally over the prohibition of posse comitatus, which since 1817 has made sure that, you know, we don't have a military force patrolling our civilian streets. Um, and these these military forces will be patrolling our neighborhoods, militarizing our neighborhoods. And mm. that is the textbook definition of a coup, all of these things together. Well, uh, I, I was going to say prescient that your book is named a, a handbook for American revolutionaries, because uh, uh, this is really getting, uh, I mean, this economic crisis, on top of all the other crises we've had, you know, courtesy of the Bush administration. I mean, yeah. you have to comment on John McCain holding democracy hostage, essentially. I, I mean... I, Right. Have you ever Thank seen you. this? Like, can he just Thank say, you, I'm just not going to debate, I'm not going to, I quit <laughs> for yeah, campaigning no, for president? You. You are so great because you always see a little bit, you know, further down the road than most people are ready to. And Yeah, I'm, I'm a good two to three minutes ahead of my time most days. <laughs> yeah. You know, we need every minute. <laughs> like, you know, it's October 1934. I mean, right. um, what is so terrifying about this? Can he hold democracy hostage? Hello, America. Hello, America. <laughs> they can do anything they want unless Americans rise up and recognize that 
that this is a kind of a, 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 a slow motion coup. All right. Um, I, listen to this. You know, can he do this? It's completely against every protocol and precedent for 200 years of our democracy. Well, but well, don't you think that if he can suspend the, ele- the campaign and suspend the debates, that that isn't softening us up to suspend the election? Yeah, well, uh-huh, Jim keeps exactly. talking about this, about, you know, are we, are we this close to martial law? Well, there's a military unit that's coming back, uh, I think, from, from Iraq. It's being trained in crowd exactly. control uh, measures, so, as if they're anticipating uh, well, I mean, riots. Right, and, the, and Naomi, look at Sarah Palin. It's like, when have you ever seen a vice president, she can't take questions from reporters? She, can't, she has to be completely, uh, you know, I, I mean, it just, it really is stunning. And clearly this was a, a trick to try and cancel the vice presidential debate because she's clearly so unprepared. You know, I mean, yeah. I, have I seen it? I'm sorry to tell you, yes, this 